Oh, well, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. Every now and then I see an article online and I think it might be of relevance to the channel and the viewers. And today is no exception. I found one that's talking about getting the best price for your part exchange cup. Some interesting things in there. There's some that I don't think are that relevant and some that I think really are. Oh, I'd be interested to go through it and I'll give you my views as well on top. So this is an article from this is money.co.uk and it's titled Don't do these before selling your car. Nine mistakes to avoid losing money trading in your wheels. Um, there's a load of waffle here talking about it, but we're just going to go straight in and find out what their number one thing is. Number one is two sets of keys. It might seem like a small issue, only having one key. After all, isn't a key only a couple of hundred quid to replace? Uh, they go into saying why some cars can be up to a thousand pounds. Yes, I think it all depends on what type of car you're selling. If you're selling something that is, you know, maybe under five years old, under 50,000 miles, then yeah, it's, you're going to want one. Um, it would probably pay to speak to a dealership beforehand, find out how much it would be to get a replacement. You don't necessarily have to spend out money getting that key beforehand, but you can always work into negotiations. And if the, you know, the person tries to say, oh, well, it's going to cost me a thousand pounds, and you've just spoken to BMW, for example, and they say it's going to be 400 pounds, then, you know, you can use that for your negotiations. And if they really want the key, you know, you can go and get one, can't you? And you'll get a better price. So yeah, keys can be important. I think on older cars, not so much. Um, we don't always have two keys for our cars. We'll tend to say, you know, you only need one to drive it. Um, and a second is a bonus. Every car's got one key. A second's a bonus. Number two is having 100,000 miles on the clock could knock 3,000 pounds off. 60,000 miles on the clock is a sweet spot before your wheels lose 20% of value. But make sure you sell before 100,000 miles in particular. Recent data from CarWow found that the sweet spot to sell your car is before it reaches 60,000 miles. On average, cars lose around 27% of their value when their odometer reaches 60,000. Now, that probably makes a lot of sense if you're looking to trade cars fairly regularly, get into newer ones more often, then yeah, keep the mileage down as you go up in increments. Certainly, if you get over 100,000 miles, then definitely it is going to affect the value more, you know, being 10,000 over 100,000 miles is, you know, makes more of a difference than 10,000 when it's got 50,000 miles, you know, the difference between, say, 60,000 miles and 110,000 miles, um, the difference between those two 10,000 mile differences is going to be huge. So if you are looking to get into newer cars fairly regularly, then yes, I think that's very important. But if it's a car that you're planning to keep for a long time, then it would be more expensive to buy a new car than it would be to just keep driving on. And I know a lot of people, including my other half, seem to think that 50,000 miles, 60,000 miles, a car is essentially about ready to die. You know, the cam belt's going to snap or, you know, a piston's going to go or something. But that's just not the case. Modern engines are made to last an awful lot longer these days. It used to be that you would have a car and you would replace your engine quite a few times. In fact, there used to be people who had, you know, whole workshops dedicated to refurbishing engines every 50,000 miles, for example. Whereas now the engines, nine times out of ten, fire outlast the cars, the bodies, because they've all rusted out, and the engines are so dependable now. So if you're looking to change cars regularly, then yes, you probably want to keep an eye on the mileage and find the sweet spot to exchange. But otherwise, just drive and enjoy your car. Number three, removing modifications could increase value by £6,000. Bit of a random number to throw out because it's all relevant to what the car is, but it's worth remembering that customizing your car to your own specific taste is great while you're driving it, but it might make it harder to sell on. Performance enhancements such as swapping out exhausts rather than adding value can lead to reduced sales price, sometimes by as much as 40%, meaning you've not only spent money modifying your vehicle, but you'll also be missing out when it comes to selling. In extreme cases, motorists with modified cars can lose out on somewhere near £6,120 in resale value. Now, I don't know about the facts and figures, etc., but yes, 100%, we get people coming to us all the time with their cars, and they've, they'll say, it's had a stage two map, and it's had this exhaust, and it's had different headers, it's got different wheels, and we say, you know what, it's, we'd rather have a standard car. You know, it's not an easy sell. People turn up, they see a modified car, they think it's probably had a hard life. You know, it's probably fair to say that a lot of them have had a hard life. You know, they're driven by someone who's very enthusiastic about driving, thinks they're Colin McRae, and wants to drive it hard. That's why they've got the sporty wheels and, you know, the exhaust and intake kit on it, etc. So as far as a dealer goes, they'd probably rather see that car standard or at least very tastefully modified. Otherwise, they're going to spend money putting it back to standard. Now, a lot of dealers will, including myself, sometimes if a car's got an aftermarket exhaust, um, 
leave it on there and sell it as is because some people, again, someone else might come along and enjoy it, but there is always that chance someone coming along that I really love the car, but the exhaust is really annoying. Could we have a standard one back on? And do you know what? Especially if you've got something that's uh, a, not just a bog basic car, but something quite sporty, getting a standard exhaust and putting it back, especially after someone's bodged it off, can be incredibly expensive. So if you can put the things back to standard in your car, if you've kept your old wheels and you can put the standard wheels back on, sell them on Facebook Marketplace or something, get your money back that way if you can, some of it. But don't expect to get more from a car dealer because we just look at it and think, that's going to be a headache to sort out. Number four, keep your car as clean as possible. Getting a professional valet before you sell your car can help improve first impressions, but keeping your car clean regularly has the biggest impact on value retention. A poorly kept car could knock £1,500 off its value, so keeping it clean and well-maintained really is worth it. Smoking or having pets in your car regularly could impact the price by 10%. First impressions count, so it's worth getting a professional valet done, but if you can make your car sparkle inside and out, and you can also save yourself around £150 by doing your own valet. So yeah, they're saying you could get like a full professional valet, 150 quid or more in certain cases. Again, it all depends on the age and value of your vehicle. If you've got a car you think you're going to get a thousand pounds for, it's, it's not going to hurt to either give it a good clean yourself just to hoover out. You haven't got to get right in there with your detailing brushes and sort everything out, but hoover up the muck from inside, you know, clean up the mats, try and clean the windows if you can, get the kids stickers off the backs of the seats give it a clean on the outside or take it to your local hand car wash for 30 quid. You can probably get it looking pretty good. And when you present that to the salesperson who is going to give you a part exchange valuation, it's just going to be met with far more enthusiasm. I'm not saying it's actually going to affect the value hugely. I think it will. I suppose what I'd say is having a car nicely presented won't necessarily get you more than what the trade in value should be. But having a car that is grubby, the wheels look rubbish, um, you know, it's full of stuff inside, it's got all the kids toys and monster munch mushed into the seat then that is going to deduct from the value because people are looking at that like yeah i mean it would be a five thousand pound car but yeah it's obviously it's not in the best condition we don't know what's underneath so we're going to give you four thousand or whatever these are just examples obviously but yeah it does make it does make a big difference i think having a car reasonably well presented but not expecting showroom thing i don't think you have to spend 150 pounds on a professional valet but just just a good clean makes a huge difference Number five, sort warning lights out or miss on up to £4,590. Warning lights can knock up to 30% off the value of your car when you're looking to sell. Don't be tempted to pass on repair costs during the sale because you're likely going to lose more money than you would have to to fork out and doing the repairs. In many cases, it really is cheaper to get the issues fixed before selling. And that is 100% right. If you know your car's got a few issues, um, A, don't try and hide them because your dealer will probably plug that car in and find out if it's got some underlying issue there. And it's not going to thank you when it comes back to if you have an issue with your car and you've clearly stitched them up with it. I mean, it happens to us all the time, but it's not going to, you know, make you any friends. The dealers, nine times out of 10, not trying to, you know, screw you over here. So don't screw them over and everyone can have a great working relation. If you've got an engine management light on, uh, then it probably is worthwhile just taking it to an independent garage and getting them to do a diagnostic. So it probably costs you something from 30 quid to 60 quid just for them to plug it in and tell you what it might be. And it might be something as simple as no two cents that might cost you 80 quid. But if you take your car, especially if it's an expensive car, to a dealer and say, I want a part exchange. It's got the engine management light on. I don't know what it is. I mean, it seems to drive okay. Of course, they've got to budget for the worst case, you know, if they need to fit a new cap to it. They'll probably plug it in and get an idea. But still, they're going to want to be cautious because they could change a sensor and maybe it's not the sensor. Maybe it's something else. So you are definitely going to lose out on value that way 100% if someone brought a car to me and I had a warning light on I'd be wanting to play it very cautiously because these can, things can develop so um speak to a garage you know they're not trying to rip you off say I've got this engine management light. I want to trade my car and could you let me know what it is they might look at it and say look it's a historic fault and uh, it hasn't it's not currently happening it might be the O2 sensor and it just had a little blip and they put the engine management light on and it's been on for six months but actually there's no current fault so they might be able to clear it for you and that's that and the dealer will be happy with that as well it's just peace of mind. So you're short selling yourself by not looking into it, basically. Number six, private plates don't increase the value of your car. Private plates are a hot commodity with some of the most expensive DVLA plates going for hundreds of thousands of pounds. While private plates can look cool, they are classed as a personal modification to a vehicle. 
Any modification wise can impact the price of the car and a private plate could knock off between 200 and 300 pounds. Not only are you likely to get a good price for them, but a personalized plate won't make the value of your car higher. In many cases, you'll be charged for the inconvenience and time it would take to return the car to the age related place. And that is 100% what happens with us. One thing I noticed recently, actually, when I visited uh, Jamie at Car Key, he would have a lot of cars there that did still have their private plates on. And I can understand why. Me personally, I like to see the original plate back on. Just because it's age related, it seems okay. And again, it seems less modified and it just, it just looks right. If you see a private plate, there's a mindset of some customers that just think you're trying to hide something. So I definitely like to put them back. It's going to cost me £80 and I might try and sell that plate on afterwards. Um, maybe I can get a couple hundred quid for it. So I might actually make a profit from doing it myself. But if you're trading your car in, you may as well do that yourself before. It will also help you out because a dealer, someone like myself, is going to see that you've still got your private plate on your car. Your V5 is registered with that private plate. So if I want to take your car apart exchange and want to get it cleaned up, through the workshop and app for sale in the next few days, it's just not going to be possible really to be able to sell that to another customer because you're going to have to retain your number plate, wait for that V5 to come back, then you can transfer it to us. And it's just going to extend the whole process and you're relying on the customer to actually get that stuff done and get it back to you. So um, yeah, if you're starting to think about part exchange in your car, you're seriously thinking about it, get your private plate off, get it stowed away. That way you know for sure you're not going to lose it in the transaction as well. This is the other thing, because if you trade it into an unscrupulous dealer who says, yeah, no worries, trade it into me, I'll keep the V5 and um, we'll transfer it off for you, etc. You know, they can transfer, as soon as they've got that V5 and they've got the vehicle, they can transfer it into their own name and you could lose it. And then you've got an ugly battle to try and get that number plate back. So again, preempting your sale, get it done in advance. Number seven, tread depth matters and could cost you. Tire checks are critical for safety and to make sure you aren't breaking the law while driving. Whether you use a tread depth gauge or a 20p coin check, your car tires should always meet legal requirements. Same as with repairs, dealerships will charge you for time and inconveniencing changing your tires. So check your tires before you hand over the keys. Yeah, you might be able to set, put a set of budgets on. Most dealers probably aren't gonna care unless you've got a very sort of sporty prestige type car on the brand of tires. Um, but they probably are going to say, if it needs a full set of tyres, they'll say, oh, you know, it's going to be a £1,000 or something. They're going to round it up again for the inconvenience of the time. So, yeah, you might be able to get yourself a set of budget tyres for 200 quid, and therefore it's got. you can say it's got a brand new set of tyres. And if they want to change them for a premium brand, then they can, but they can't really complain that you haven't got good tyres on there, and it's certainly not going to stop them from selling it. So tyres, yeah, it's a, it's a fair one. Um, you should be you know, making sure your tires are good anyway, regardless. But it will help you when it comes to part exchanging. Number eight, each scratch or scuff deducts 50 pounds off your valuation. Even minor chips can impact your car's value. Address any damages to your car before selling to make sure you take home the full value of the car. According to the experts, motorists could see as much as 50 pounds per scratch knocked off an initial valuation if their car doesn't meet the condition you stated so it's worth getting these checked out. Most of the time, your car insurance policy will cover these small repair costs anyway, so shop around at garages to get some quotes for light body paint touch-ups and repairs. So yes and no, if you've got like a scuff on a bumper corner um, that is obviously going to need paint and it stands out quite obviously, it probably is worthwhile seeing if you can get a mobile paint repair guy or a body shop going speaking to them because you might find it only costs you a couple hundred quid to get fixed, but a dealer's going to knock minimum 500 quid off for something like that. If we're talking about minor light surface scuffs, then, you know, really, they shouldn't be knocking any more than a couple hundred quid off for the whole car because you can get the whole car, you know, mopped, um, polished right back for that sort of money. Um, again, there is a time and inconvenience factor. The better you can make it look, definitely, it comes down to the cleaning again, making sure everything's well presented. Um, again, it depends on the age and value of your vehicle. Newer cars, they're going to be more fussy. Older ones, not so much. And number nine is keep up with service checks to prevent £2,000 hit. Falling behind on your car servicing can reduce your car's value by 10 to 15%, so make sure you book in regularly and keep a record of all the service history too. It might not seem like a big deal at the time, but falling behind on your car service schedule can prove to be a costly mistake when selling your car. An incomplete service history will reduce your car's value by 10 to 15%, and even more if your car is still within the manufacturer's warranty period, as this will be void if you haven't kept up with your services. 
So yeah, hundred percent. Especially if you have got a car that is under manufacturer's warranty, you need to be keeping up with services because otherwise you avoided it for the next person, and that is a huge part of the value of the car. So if the next buyer can't use it, then it's going to be much cheaper, isn't it? So especially when you're under manufacturer's warranty, make sure you're doing it. But even after that, even if you're getting service in bits and pieces done, if you can, maybe just try and keep a little folder or a wallet in the glove box. I know it's difficult to keep on top of admin, and I'm not one to talk about it because I'm terrible for this sort of thing. But if you can keep it all in one place so that when it does come to it, you can kind of put it together and just spend 10, 15 minutes kind of organizing it, taking out the, you know, your old insurance renewal document that you might have stuffed in there as well. That's not relevant to the dealer. They don't want to see that. Make sure you've got everything in one place. If you can order it, you know, date wise, and you're going to get, if you can show that again, the better you can present this thing that you are essentially selling to a dealer the more money you're going to get, the happier you're making this person feel about buying your car from you at a set price, the more you're likely to get paid for it, really. You know, if someone brings in a car, it's clean, it's got good tires, and, you know, they can show me that even if the service history is not perfect, but there's a good record of some of it there. It doesn't look like they've just completely neglected this car for the last three years they've been owning it, then I'm far more inclined to be like, yeah, no, fair enough. I'll give you the same sort of money as I would before service history because, you know, nothing's perfect. So that is their nine. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else on top of that that I would say would be essential. If, you can, if you're coming up to your car being due for an MOT, so long as it's not something older and you're expecting it to fail, just get a new MOT. Again, for a dealer, it's a bit of guarantee that they're not going to just ditch a load of money in repairing your car. I understand with cheaper cars, that might be why people are trying to get out of them because they think they are going to do that. You have to understand that the dealer is going to understand that as well, and they're not going to want to pay as much money. But if you have got a car that you think, you know, it looks old, it looks a bit tired, but I know it's mechanically good and will probably go for a 70, put one on there because it's going to make you back a lot more than that 50 quid. And it's just, again, it's a convenience thing for the dealer. So that is something I would definitely do. It did mention it earlier when it comes to the valeting, but smoking and pets in the car, if you can do something about again, asking a valeter to try and sort out the smell as best as you can, get the cigarette ash and things like that out, maybe touch up your cigarette burns, things like that, because, you know, we're going to stick our head in that car and if it absolutely stinks of cigarette smoke or dogs or whatever, you know, it's not that someone won't buy it, but it's a lot of work to kind of get rid of it because a lot of people will just turn their nose up and they won't want it at all. So something to take into consideration, if you can convince yourself to keep the pets to just the boot and not have the dog hair everywhere else, not smoke in the car, even if you are a smoker, no judgment, I used to be, then that will help the value of your car. It depends what's more important, your comfort, having a cigarette while you're driving, or how much you want to get for your car when you come to park exchange it. Can't really think of anything else off the top of my head, but I think all of this really boils down to, you know, put your best foot forward, present the car as best you can without going absolutely crazy. No one's expecting you to make this concourse standard. It never will be. Dealers are realistic. But if you present it nicely, you're going to get treated nicely. If you present it like a bag of crap, then no one's going to be, you know, dying to hand over good money for your car. It seems fairly straightforward to me, but what do I know? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Any other things I might have missed? Any other things that you think don't matter? Uh, interesting one to talk about. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Loads of videos like this coming all the time. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.